I don't know. Maybe it's the rear of your mirror, but we have to ask, is it finally safe to circle back to some of the higher quality companies that have really been punished for being what we call COVID plays? It's been lasting a while now, eight months. Takes Thermo Fisher Scientific. That's a well-run, no-drama company that I like to describe as the arms dealer for life sciences and pharma. During the darkest days of the pandemic, Thermo Fisher made a lot of money selling COVID tests and big-ticket equipment for companies that were developing their own vaccines and treatments. That was great until Wall Street went into post-COVID mode, which is why the stock fell from 672 at its highs last year to 588 today. However, the stocks rallied 90 points just in the last month and a half. And for good reason, frankly. Last Thursday, Thermo Fisher reported an excellent beat and raise quarter. The stock sell up nearly 20% from its mid-June lows. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it's got a lot more room to run. Plus, let's say you are worried about a recession like so many are who come on air. Well, this is exactly the kind of steady any business that you do just fine. You know what? Don't take it from me. Earlier today, I got a chance to speak with Mark Casper, the bankable chairman and CEO of Thermo Fisher Scientific, to get a better sense of how this company's doing. Take a look. Mark, many of the people in the science business who had work that came from COVID have pretty much fallen off a cliff since COVID's run its course. You, on the other hand, have one of the biggest earnings beats I've seen in 2022. How's that possible? Jim, thanks again for having me today. And yes, we had a really strong Q2 building on the great start to the year. And, uh, you know, really a, a great team effort. Uh, the team did a great job of delivering 18% revenue growth and 13% core growth and really strong earnings. The, the business is performing at a very high level. And uh, it's very clear as we look at the, uh, the industry, we had another quarter of uh, really meaningful share gains. Well, I also like the fact that a lot of people are worried about recession. But this time... Your business model has changed rather dramatically. For instance, the industrial customer number, uh, the, the uh, consumables. Can you tell us about the new Thermo Fisher? Sure. So, so Jim, you know, the company has a, uh, a very experienced management team, and, you know, we've managed through different environments. And if I think about, you know, 10 years ago or so, you know, we had uh, about 30% of our revenue was serving the um, capital equipment uh, type of business. And today, um, that's less than 20%. In fact, 80% of our revenue is services and consumables. And pharma and biotech, which is the least economically sensitive end market, represents about 60% of our revenue. And that's up dramatically um, from the financial crisis uh, back in 2008, 2009. So the company certainly has a, a very resilient portfolio today. No, when we look at the numbers in preparation to talk to you, the one thing I was concerned about is there have been almost no IPOs this year. So to be linked to biotech mm -hmm. means that you must have a solid relationship with the existing biotechs and have faith that there are enough companies out there that are going to be doing studies, even if they're not public. Is that true? Yeah, so when I look at our pharma and biotech end market, the, the growth has been extremely robust. In fact, we had uh, mid-teens. Um, organic growth serving that customer set in the second quarter, very similar to what right. we had um, over the last few quarters. And when I look at that from the small customers to the large customers, uh, it's been very widespread in terms of the strength. And uh, whether it's our service business lines or our products, again, really strong performance. So while there's certainly some companies that haven't been able to tap the IPO market, you know, there's clearly money out there and, and our customers uh, are clearly choosing to work with us. I had been concerned about a similar issue when it came to PP, PPD, but it looks like that that's one of those things where you have an existing business. Everyone wants to see you do another business, so it's an easy bolt-on because they trust you as a partner. So this has worked out pretty famously. Yeah, so in December of last year, we closed our largest acquisition in our company's history, which was uh, adding clinical research capabilities to the company through the acquisition of PPD. And the business is off to a great start. In fact, we uh, raised our outlook for that business as well uh, during our earnings call, and we expect 12% growth um, organically for that business this year and uh, meaningfully raised the accretion associated with it to about $2 a share this year and raised our synergy outlook as well. So the deal is running well ahead of the deal model, and the reason for that is customers understand the capabilities, the benefits of the combination, and our team is just doing a great job on capitalizing on the market opportunity yeah, out there. I, I remember the original PPD. This is really quite exciting that you've done that. Probably the most remarkable thing in your, in your filings that I thought was 
Uh, many companies have had a dramatic fall off in China because of the uh, no COVID policy of the government. Whether you like it or not, it has hurt business. Somehow you were able to turn what I thought was a certain headwind into what actually looks like a tailwind in China. How is that possible? So, so, Jim, the team in China did a really good job. And, in fact, on our last earnings call in Q1, we said that because of the lockdowns in Shanghai, we thought that China would actually um, be a headwind in the second quarter. And the team really powered through it. And it was a combination of fundamentally what we do in terms of supporting, controlling air pollution, biotech drugs for the Chinese society, um, health care in general. Demand has been strong. And we were also were able to support the COVID response efforts in China. We generated about $100 million of additional opportunity during the quarter to support the, effectively the testing regime that's gone on. And that combination of activities led to over 20 percent growth in the quarter. And uh, really, China continues to be uh, a strongly growing market for Thermo Fisher Scientific. Uh, last question for me is that the free cash flow is extraordinary. The cash is building. I love it when you do acquisitions. Uh, anything on your radar screen, uh, any kind of industry that you want to get bigger in? So, Jim, you know, we have a very disciplined approach to capital deployment. Right now, we're making sure we do a great job with PPD, but we're out there actively looking. And I actually think the choppiness in the economy, that'll create opportunities for us. And we're ready to move when the right transaction's available. So you'll see us be active over time and continue to strengthen our company while creating meaningful value for our shareholders. Well, that's what you've done over and over and over again. Mark Casper, Chairman and CEO of Thermo Fisher. Thank you, Mark. It's always great to see you. Thanks, Jim, for having me. Okay. Ned Money will be back at the break. Coming up, Kramer wants to hear from you.